I joined the tennis team at school, and Walnut's gonna give me some help with my return. Oh, that was bad. I don't think he's getting clear than that. Wait for it. Nope. Whoa. Walnut, I'm gonna have to replace you with a robot. In this episode, we're gonna make a tennis machine. Let's get to it. Tennis pitch machines have been around for decades. Today, you can get them from 800 to 3,000 bucks. We're going to use our 3D printer and material from old projects. You start by sketching a 2D profile of a component and then extruding it to the third dimension. Once you have all of your components drawn, you can animate it and see how the components can interact. Another awesome feature is that you can generate 2D fabrication drawings to take to the garage. You can annotate dimensions and go straight to the assembly line. It's really an amazing piece of software. Our design will have two rotating wheels that will pitch the ball. We'll use the 3D printer to print those. We'll also 3D print the bearing retainers and any pulleys we don't have on our own project group. The motor is an Ampflow E300-150. You can get it on Amazon Prime for 70 bucks. We're going to try to use spur gears to get the change of direction we need on the lower wheel, but it might be too noisy. We'll see. In the garage, we'll first cut our half inch shafting for the wheels. Let's try to cut this thing with a hacksaw. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. Let's give this a try. Much better. For the plywood sides, we'll transfer our dimensions and make the cuts. We'll use the first board as the template for the others. Here, Walnut is transferring over the key cutouts. The boards are assembled with tie rods, which are actually just all thread and nuts. That metal piece he's drilling through keeps the bit perpendicular to the board so the hole is straight. Next, he's cutting out the motor base. marking where to drill the holes. I'm not doing much of this part since it deals with things that can cut my head off. I want to make it to 13 with 10 fingers. But I can install these bearing retainers. We got our motor mounted, the pulleys set up, and all of our wheels set up where they need to be. Next thing we need to do are these spur gears, but unfortunately they didn't come with a set screw hole, so we're going to have to add one ourselves. First we're going to drill a hole with the 764 bit, then we're going to hit it with a screw tab. Oh, look at that. This is a thread test. You really do have to be careful with it, but it allows you to cut threads into metal. straight and grab it in the center if you want. Now I'm just going to slide this on the shaft and install the set screw. Get all those holes. All right. The spaggers are way too noisy and we have to drive it with a belt, so we 3D printed this pulley. So the pulley can spin freely. We're pressing in some wheel bearings. A little trivia, these are the same bearings we used to build our R2-D2, but that's for another video. Here we are putting reflective tape on rotating components. We'll then use a laser tachometer to detect rotational speed. This will tell us if the belts are slipping or the gear ratios need to be adjusted so the wheels spin the same speed. Based on dimensions, the wheels are spinning about 54 miles per hour. The 
power source is our bench power supply. In the long run, it will be powered by two 12-volt batteries in series, the kind you use on a boat. This was an amazing project that was based entirely off of simple machines. We can now trick it out with a Wi-Fi remote controller that can change speed, direction, and angle to hit the tennis racket. So far, this is what I learned. Spur gears are very noisy at high rotational speeds. Belts are quiet and forgiving, but the design needs to consider how to adjust their tension. A big pulley driving a small gear draws a lot of current. A small pulley driving a big gear is much easier on the motor, but you don't get as much speed. It's just like switching gears on a bike. And most importantly, never turn your back to an automatic pitching machine.